So here I have two examples of pulling a vacuum. I'm going to call this mechanical vacuum because we're going to use a mechanical vacuum pump to pull those molecules out of that tank. And by removing those molecules, we're going to reduce the pressure. So this first setup is very typical what you'd see how you'd hook up for a residential HVAC system. And we're going to go into that later, so don't worry about that. But I do have valve cores inside of here. We're using low loss fittings for pulling through the manifold gauge set. From the manifold gauge set, one single hose to the vacuum pump itself. So I have a little timer set up beside it so we can see how long it's taking, atmospheric pressure gauge, and we can also read the pressure on the gauges itself since they're digital. Now it's going to take some time on this first one, so I sped it up 10 times the speed and it still took a while because we're pulling through the restrictions of the valve cores, the restriction of the automatic low loss fittings, the restriction of the manifold gauge set, as well as the restriction of the one single hose to the vacuum pump. Now this vacuum pump is an 8 CFM vacuum pump, so it's pretty powerful, it's pretty fast, but we still have the restriction of the hoses. But either way, we pull all of the air out, and then the atmospheric pressure is greater, and it causes that drum to absolutely crush down. So I found it pretty fascinating, the power of the atmospheric pressure. You can see how it just twists that metal all the way up. But here we uh, shut the pump off. It took about 12 minutes or so for us to get down as low as it would go. And then when we turn this around, you can see the, the, the pump, you can see the metal. You can see what it did with the atmospheric pressure. I just crushed it, bent the metal all up. But really, there's pretty much no airspace left in there. It really crushed it incredibly well. Now I left this footage in there because I just thought it was pretty cool of how powerful it was and how that metal folded up on itself uh, as it was being crushed down. So uh, nothing really to learn in there, just a cool little video I thought. Now let's go reset this whole system up so we can take another look at it. So for this one, so we use those large hoses. We did away with the manifold gauge set. We have large hoses. We also did away with the valve cores. We did away with the automatic low loss fittings and we use much larger hoses. Here's half inch hoses. So now we're pulling from both sides, half inch hoses, no valve core, no automatic low loss fitting restriction straight to that vacuum pump. So now it's gonna pull much, much faster. Also, if you notice, I left the manifold gauge set hooked up. I used the side port of the valve core removal tool just so that we could read some pressure of what we're seeing inside that drum. Although it's not all that relevant, just wanted to see how we're pulling down. So here we can see it's gonna be pulling down much, much faster. It just squishes it really, really fast. I only sped this one up three times, but it took about, I think it was three minutes total for it to crush down. Unfortunately, this had some rust on the back side of it, and that rust did cause it to, uh, those holes to pull through so we weren't able to get it down as low as the pressure uh, but it did pull it down even with those holes much much faster than the other method so here as we can see as we turn this drum around it did the exact same thing as far as how it crushed it from the first one this just did a whole lot faster removing those restrictions it just did the same work just a whole lot faster job of it so it's just pretty impressive how it does that and you can see on the back side of this where all the rust holes are in there and uh i wish i had another drum i could do it again but i think we probably could have got that down to a minute and a half or two minutes without those holes in there so pretty impressive i think so what i'm really wanting you to understand is vacuum isn't a thing sucking these in it's a pressure difference it's the atmospheric pressure 14.7 psi at sea level. I think here it was 13 point something psi. For every square inch, there's 13 pounds pushing against it. It's the atmospheric pressure that's pushing these, that's causing these to crush in. So we're removing the pressure from the inside and it's the air pressure on the outside that's pushing this in. Now this metal is a very large container and ultimately, even though it's fairly thick steel, compared to its overall diameter, it's very thin. Our copper tubing is not going to do this because it's a very small diameter and according to this, the diameter, the tubing is very, very thick. Even though it's a long length of tubing, it's not going to crush like this. So we don't have to worry about that. Now, as important as this is to see the pressure difference, this doesn't really show everything we need for a vacuum. This does show us removing the molecules and the importance of the pressure. But what's even more important than this is dehydration. Uh, now, dehydration is very important and the size of those hoses are going to make a big difference to, for us to get that dehydration. If you saw the two hoses that we had straight vacuum pump 
pull it down a whole lot faster. Now, unfortunately, the barrel that we did that on was leaking. It actually pulled some holes into the barrel itself, so we weren't able to crush it down as much as I would have liked, but you can still see how much faster it was. Even with the holes in the barrel, it pulled it down much, much faster. So those sizes of the hoses that we use are gonna play a big part in us pulling a vacuum, but again, it's not just us pulling the molecules out and that pressure difference. It's gonna be for us to dehydrate, so stay tuned.